Hi everybody, Malcolm McCauley from C5 Insight, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about some of the conditional formatting features of the SharePoint application. We had a use case come up at one of our customers recently, and we thought it was a really good illustration of how you could leverage the power of conditional formatting. So we wanted to give you a quick video that kind of gives you an overview of how this tool works. So what we've got here is a document library in one of our SharePoint sites, and its purpose is to manage all of our contractor agreements. Now, what you're seeing here is a demo environment, but in reality, what we would have is a library much like this, and it would, would be a place where we would put all of our signed agreements. And you can see we've got various columns of metadata, including the status of the agreement, when it was effective, when it expires, days until expiry. And so what we'd like to do is continue to put all of our contractor agreements, but the challenge we have is that those agreements are crafted at different times of the year. And so we onboard different contractors for different purposes, and their agreements are valid for one year. And really what we need is a, a way to not only put those into one document library like this, but we need a way to identify quickly which ones are expiring soon, and even in some cases, which ones are expiring critically soon, meaning in the next week or so. And so what we're going to do is apply some conditional formatting to help surface that information for us as we look at our list. The first thing you'll notice as we look at the metadata is we've got this days to expiry, and this is a calculated field. So as you can see, we've got the expiration date is coming up on the uh, February the 5th, which is six days from now. And if we were to change that, so if I just select this record and we tap in here and change the expiration date to the 10th, you'll notice that we will see a few days added to our days until expiry. It's now bumped it up to 10. This is based on a calculated field and it's just doing some basic math. It's essentially saying where the status is active. We look at the expiration date and we do some basic math. Let's have a quick look at that field just so you understand how it's set up. So I'm gonna go into the library settings and I'm going to pop into the days until expiry field and you can see on screen when it loads, we've got a very simple formula that says, if status equals active, then calculate the expiration date minus today. Otherwise, do nothing, which is what the two quotes represent. So if status is active, take the expiration date minus today. Otherwise, put it in blank. And the reason we have the status is active is when a contract is uh, renewed, we actually toggle that to renewed and we update a new one. And we don't want the calculation happening when a contract is sitting in renewed status because we're no longer worried about that one. It's actually going to be replaced with a new one. And so we want to look at the new one. Of course, we can manage some views and we'll talk about that in a different video down the line. We can manage some views to make sure that we're only looking at the active ones and only looking at renewed ones uh, as and so on as we see fit. But for the purposes of today, really all we want is the math on this. So as we have all of our metadata columns set up and all the logic is functioning properly, now we want to put in some conditional logic to say when this is the case. So in this scenario, we have a contractor whose expiry uh, agreement rather is expiring in anywhere between 11, we're going to say 11 and 30 days. And so that's intentional. We want to flag anything 11 to 30 days we want to flag that as yellow. And that's really, if you think about it visually, we have a whole bunch of agreements on the list. We want to very quickly be able to pull out the ones that are yellow because we know those are the ones that need our attention. They're expiring in the next 11 to 30 days and we need to get in touch with that contractor, make sure we have the new agreement in front of them, get the new signature so that we're able to proceed with a new agreement, get it in place so that they can continue on the job site. If they don't have an active agreement, they can't actually legally be on the, the contract site in our example today. So really important that we make sure that we see these. So here I'm going to go ahead and drop down the little menu here and go to column settings and format this column. And you'll see we actually have two options, format view, which is going to highlight the entire row of data. So we can set some conditional logic here. The two methods work very similar, but this one is going to highlight the entire row. Format columns is only going to highlight the specific column or cell that we're talking about. And so that's the one we want to start with because we want this one to show up in yellow. I want just this days until expiry field that has the number 10 in it to show up yellow when it falls between that 11 and 30 days. So I'm going to go into the conditional formatting section and I'm going to click manage rules. And here you see there are no rules, otherwise they'd be listed. And I'm going to go ahead and add a rule. And the little wizard makes it very, very straightforward. So if choose a column, so if days until expiry, and you can see we've got some basic parameters here. So is equal to or not equal to. In our case, we want, um, we're actually going to have two 
two conditions. And so the first one is going to be greater than or equal to 11. And you can see show list item as, and I'm going to go ahead and change that to yellow. Now, we also want to add a condition because we, we have a, a dual timeline here. We want it between 11 and 30 days. So I'm going to go ahead and say add condition. Same process. I'm going to go ahead and say and, and if days until expiry is less than or equal to, and we're going to say 30. It's already set to yellow. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So I'm going to back out of here and just close this little wizard down. Let's go ahead and change the date real quick. Just make sure our logic's working. So I'm going to go ahead and update the metadata on this. I'm going to go ahead. We know that uh, if, if it was the 10th, it would be 10 days from now. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's make this the 15th, which should fall in our range. And sure enough, our field becomes, or our, our cell rather, becomes highlighted in yellow. So that's exactly what we want. We just want that when it's inside of that range and I pull up this list, or this library rather, I'm going to see all the yellow ones. And those are the ones I want to pay attention to because I want to reach out to those people and get the new contract in process with them. So what happens if that time period becomes under 10 days? That becomes a little more problematic. We, we are a little more urgent uh, in our approach to that kind of contract. And so we want to do a slightly different approach to that. We actually want to highlight those where it's 10 days or under the entire row. I want that highlighted as red because I really want it called out to our, our team who manages these. I really want them to see that and understand that it's urgent and they have to get on it right away. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to click the column settings and format this column. And this time, as I said, we've got the ability to format the view. And so I want to go to the conditional formatting section and I'm going to, you can see we've got a rule that's already here. It says show all values as, and it's got this gray bar. I actually don't want that. So I'm going to remove that. You'll see that when we deselect this now, it doesn't have any gray or anything like that. And so what we do want to do though, is I want to add a rule and our logic is exactly the same, except our numbers are different. So we're going to say if days until expiry is less than or equal to 10, we're going to show list items as, and I'm going to go ahead and pick this red with red text. And so I'm going to go ahead and save that. We'll close out of here. Let's pick our record and let's just validate that we in fact have set this up properly. So we want to change this to be under. So let's go ahead and say that's due on the eighth. Now that is within the time range under 10. There you have it. You see the entire row. If I deselect that, the entire row is now highlighted red. And as I said, that's going to increase the urgency for our team. When they see something that is highlighted in red like that, that is a problem. They need to jump on those ones more critically because we now have only eight days until that contract expires and we need to get the new one done. So a very simple use case, but what this illustrates for you is the power of being able to use the conditional formatting features to raise or lower urgency or, in, or intentionality in your team around specific items in a document library. This same logic also works in the lists component of SharePoint or Microsoft lists, and it operates exactly the same way. So you give it some criteria and you specify what, what it needs to be. So very short little video today, but we hope that that gives you some insight in how you can use this tool. Give it some thought. How can you use these features to I highlight or, or illustrate key pieces of information in your libraries or lists? If you have any questions about anything you've seen today or anything else in the scope of the Microsoft 365 applications, please reach out to C5. We would be thrilled to have a conversation with you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.